Now we're going to dive right into what is the pelvic floor. And today we're going to be covering the fact that there are internal components and external components. So the external components are referred to as your vulva. We have three lovely holes. There's about six major components. The internal components um, are actually muscles, bones, ligaments, joints, all of those things. And we'll be getting lots of exposure and pictures to that so you can really get an understanding of your pelvis and your pelvic floor. The pelvic floor has five major functions. It helps with our bladder and bowel continents, sexual appreciation, the pelvic floor helps to support our spine and hips. It helps to support our pelvic organs. And finally, it acts as a lymphatic pump. Georgia and I today will be talking about how the pelvic floor does not do this all by itself, but it actually has to communicate with our core muscles, our back, which includes our back and tummy muscles, as well as our diaphragm. Um, and so it's I kind of consider this area of our body the workhorse of the body. And here, just to help solidify that, I like to show this picture and I'm gonna uh, take my mouse here. So you can see our pelvic floor is here. Then we have our tummy muscles, our back muscles, and then our diaphragm. So um, even though this pelvic floor here looks like one glommed on layer of muscle, it's actually this beautiful sort of 3D spider web, which we'll be exploring. But you can really take these anatomy Anatomy pictures and kind of put them in your head and your brain, especially as Georgia takes you through the movement. Um, I think it's always helpful to visualize what's going on, what muscles are firing and working as you actually go through them. And it helps you connect with them even more and helps really solidify whatever you're trying to accomplish. Now here is our beautiful vulva and I have an affinity for uh, Betty White. So you can see why do people say grow some balls? Balls are weak and sensitive. If you wanna be tough, grow a vagina. Those things can take a pounding. So here uh, is our beautiful vulva. And I think in being able to appreciate the pelvic floor, it's good that we know what our genitalia looks like. So I'm going to pop off of the screen share and I'm actually going to show you one of my favorite things, which is my vulva puppet here. Okay. So one of the things that I will recommend patients do is take a mirror to be able to actually visualize this aspect of our body. Um, one of the things that I like about uh, Nisa's V-Vision mirror is that it has a light on it, um, and that can help really shine a light on all of these different lovely folds we have. But also when you look at your pelvic floor, you can see the motions that it's um, supposed to do. So just a quick give us uh, an anatomy lesson in here. We have our clitoral hood, okay? When we move the clitoral hood back, we have our clitoris. This is just the part we can see externally. Then we have underneath the clitoris, we have our urethra. Then we have our vaginal opening right here, okay? These are the labia minora. These are the labia majora, okay? So with the pelvic floor, when we look at this area of our body, it's important to know what does the skin look like? Um, uh, is one labia longer than the other? All of those things will tell you how things are moving and engaging. Now, we'll go back to our screen share here. And you can see how everyone is really, really different. So this picture, obviously I wanted to get a nice good visual of what's going on, but you have the clitoris, which is quite tiny up here, the clitoral hood. And then again, when we kind of separate everything, you may or may not be able to see your urethra um, but you'll for sure be able to see that vaginal opening. And this will tie in with some uh, homework I'm gonna give you from later. So now, 
Okay, so this is where I talked about uh, it's important to look at those external parts. One of the things that I um, like about this, uh, this mirror in particular, the V vision, is that you can observe your pelvic floor in different positions. So laying down versus standing versus squatting um, and having that light there is really, really helpful. And again, we'll tie into this later. So this is something that I wanted to kind of layer on with what we're going to be doing and as it uh, ties in with Georgia later. So here we have our external vulva, but if we kind of make that skin transparent, here is the clitoris right underneath. Okay, here's our vagina, here's our urethra. So um, I'm gonna stop the share. So here is your clitoris, okay? It's quite large. So the only part we see is this little head right here, and then it comes up, attaches, and then the legs go down. So as Georgia is going through her breathing and having you uh, cue in with your pelvic floor, know that the more mobility you have through your pelvic floor, the more more kind of compression and activation we get on these lovely 8,000 nerve endings. And that can really make your homework that I gave you earlier a lot more enjoyable. So now when we go back to this, share. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, I want to help us appreciate um, our external parts uh, or our internal parts externally, okay? So here's a little video I made for y'all. Before we dive into the muscular anatomy, we're gonna go ahead and work together to appreciate all of the edges of our pelvic floor, or as I like to call them, the pelvic floor borders. So if you go ahead and lean to the side, reaching your hand underneath your bottom, you're going to feel a hard bone known as your ischial tuberosity. Now with the other hand, you reach to the side, going all the way under, you'll feel your other ischial tuberosity. These are the lateral or outside edges of your pelvic floor. If you're having trouble appreciating the ischial tuberosity, let me go ahead and show you where it's located. So if you look at the fold of my butt cheek right here, if I go kind of towards the inside and push, now my fingertips are on that ischial tuberosity. So that's a really easy way to appreciate that. So sitting like this, if you bring your fingertips even closer together and then you kind of cup them up or curve them up, you're going to fall off of the ischial tuberosity and into the soft tissue, that's your pelvic floor. So again, you have just palpated or pushed on the lateral or outside aspect of your pelvic floor muscles. Now, let's go over the hand placement to appreciate the anterior and posterior aspects or front and back parts of the pelvic floor. If I take my hand and walk down my tummy until I get to a firm bone, this is known as the pubic bone. And on top of the pubic bone is the mons pubis, which is just a fatty area. Oops, I'm sorry. I was looking at the chat. Area <laughs> that makes up kind of our vulvar area. If I take this other hand and reach around to the back, placing my hand on my low back and walking it down, I'm going to go onto my sacrum. I keep walking it down until I get to the very tip of it, which is known as our tailbone. With your hands in this position, you are now appreciating the anterior or front and posterior or back aspect of your pelvic floor. I know it's kind of challenging to see that back hand, so let me go ahead and show you. If I stand up here, this is my low back. Here is my sacrum, so it's kind of like an upside down triangle. If I bring my hand to my low back and walk my hand down, now I'm on my sacrum, I keep going down in between 
my butt cheeks, I'm going to go ahead and eventually get to that tailbone. So it's quite low and you have to kind of push firmly in, but that will help you appreciate all of the edges of your pelvic floor. Now let's dive into what that muscular anatomy looks like. Okay, so I uh, I hope you all got a chance to do that. So I'm going to show you with my pelvis model here. Um, you guys appreciated all of the borders, which is awesome. But just so you can get a visualization, this is how you guys are all sitting right now. Okay, um, and our pelvis some people kind of say can be the junk drawer of our body. And so you might find that when you're working on this stuff, a lot of emotions can come up um, because there can be a lot of holding there. So now we'll go ahead. Here is, so again, um, thinking of that pelvis bone that you uh, just appreciated, this is our layer one pelvic floor muscles. So they uh, are known for sexual appreciation and urination, uh, and they form this triangle right here. The next group, layer two, this is where you can see that clitoris. There's the head, it comes up, attaches into our pubic bone, and then comes down here. We have the bulbs of the clitoris there. So when you're thinking about sexual appreciation, you can really go ahead and think more broadly instead of just focusing on that one part. Uh, and you can see how it's so involved with the urethra. And if we go to the layer three muscles, now this is the deep layers. This is as if we're looking into your pelvis and you can see this really um, broad, amazing attachment. So I'm gonna stop that share. So again, as we think of these exercises that George is going to take us through and the movement and breathing, our stomach muscles are attaching right at the top of this pubic bone our back muscles right through here. So I always say that the muscles communicate with their next door neighbors. So the pelvic floor talks with the tummy, the tummy talks with the pelvic floor and vice versa. So this again is gonna play in with as we connect with that movement. Now I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so your pelvic floor has range of motion, as I was saying, and we're going to go ahead and practice this. So this self-assessment we're going to go through, I'm going to actually have my face shown. And that's one of those things that um, you can always reference later. Uh, and I'll put it back up. Maybe you can take a screenshot of it. But the pelvic floor, as you guys are sitting right here, um, has voluntary and involuntary contraction. So we're gonna practice the voluntary contraction. This is typically known as a Kegel. So you're gonna go ahead and tighten your pelvic floor as if you're stopping the flow of urine or trying not to pass gas and then let it go. Nice. So one more time, go ahead tighten the pelvic floor as if you're trying to stop urine or not pass gas. There's someone in the elevator with you. You don't want to eke one out and then relax it. That's voluntary contraction. Now, if you just do a quick little cough, <coughs> you should feel your pelvic floor move up right before you cough. That is an involuntary contraction. Now, the next two movements are going to be our uh, voluntary relaxation. So what I want you to do is I want you to bear down like you're trying to pass gas. Okay. No one's in the elevator now and then relax. Good. Go ahead and bear down. Like you're trying to pass gas or trying to pee quickly and relax. Okay. So you should feel that pelvic floor drop. Uh, and then the last one is just take a couple of nice, slow, deep belly breaths, inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your mouth. You should feel as you inhale, pelvic floor drop. As you exhale, pelvic floor um, move up. 
what's really great about this is if you can't feel it, that's okay. This is where I, that's why I highlighted the mirror earlier. So if we're thinking about our vulva here, when I cough, okay, we'll go back to the coughing scenario. I will watch someone's vulva as a pelvic floor physical therapist. And as they cough, I'll see their pelvic floor do this motion, okay? That's not what we want. We should see a squeezing in, okay? So you can watch your labia or your perineum or even the vaginal opening. When you go to tighten, like you're trying not to pass gas, you might see your rectum, we call it wink, it's called an anal wink, um, which is funny to me. Uh, and now whenever someone winks at me, I just think anal wink. Um, and so you can go ahead and see when I contract, can I see the squeeze up? Is it a lot or is a little bit? Maybe one labia moves and another one doesn't move. Okay, when I take a deep breath, can I see that pelvic floor move down? Okay, so these are the things, again, that can be really helpful when you're trying to connect with your body. Now, I'm going to go back to sharing the screen here. So if you all want, go ahead and take a picture of this self-assessment. What I find with my clients in my private practice is that sometimes morning is easier Sometimes evening is harder to find these connections. Um, sometimes midday, if they have their attention divided. So I want you, in addition to going home tonight, having an orgasm, start practicing and just checking in with yourself.